Hai Abdul. Favorite marmalade. So. Yeah. You like it, Herr Franco? Buonasera, good afternoon. This is quite a momentous week for us because the pool, La Piscina, is finally finished. It's uh, been a long, long project. It all began, as some of you might know, back in February 2021, two years ago, uh, when we applied for the permits for the pool, which are quite complicated in Italy. Uh, and then Guido was a little bit reticent and I said, no, come on, it's gonna be amazing. I think basically I grew up uh, in a beach house and living on boats and so I've always been near the water so for him he's more of a, a, a land lover but for for me I think the water is is such a an integral part of who I am and how I uh, just feel serenity and so I was really keen on making this pool idea work and I said look I'll pay for it I'll do a second job uh, for a year and do, I was working filming and editing for other clients as well as doing YouTube, as well as planning for a wedding. And now I look back on it and I think, was I insane to take all of that on? But this is the time to be insane, right? When you're relatively young, you're newlyweds, you're energized by uh, creating a forever home with someone you love and, and you can work hard before having kids as well. So I just thought, this is it. This is my chance before we, I have to devote myself or I want to devote myself to a family. I can just go hard and work until four in the morning and do all this uh, supplementary work to pay for the pool. So. Uh, we began this uh, project of creating a swimming pool uh, with this vision of it being somewhere that we could raise a family and, 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 and centering our time in the garden around this body of water. Uh, we planted roses uh, in the hope that they would bloom uh, when we would be able to be sitting around this, uh, this stone wall and, uh, and looking at the water. 
At that point Guido and I were both in disbelief that we'd finally arrived at that point where the pool was finished. Well, that the lining was all on, that it was all set up and ready for the water. And we just stood there thinking, ah, is this, is this really, are we really here? Are we really arrived at this day? Hello, amore. It's been like, it's been like two years since we started, no. I think that there is a bit of a parallel, or at least I've been drawing a parallel between renovations and having a newborn baby. The tendency is to want a precise date when everything will be resolved the finish line, so to speak, when you can say, yes, there's that deadline in the future and I just have to arrive at that point. But I don't know if that's the best option, or at least that's not the approach I've been adopting. It's certainly something that Italy has taught me is how to be patient and just accept things will happen when they, when they happen and you can't be so attached to deadlines. Uh, the, the stress of renovations is similar to the stress of having a crying baby and having sleep deprivation and so many people were telling us oh just make it to three months and just make it past the four month sleep regressions and get to five months or just wait till he starts eating solids then he'll sleep through the night no none of that has worked and i if you told me at the beginning i never would have thought i could make it through six months over six months of not sleeping i mean and doing all the feeds myself every night not sleeping not more than an hour at a time and no more than three hours a night but I have just been looking at each day, each 12 hour block and thinking just get through this, just focus on today rather than looking at that point in the future and saying okay that at that point uh, everything will be resolved. It may not be and it's the same with uh, waiting for tradesmen and having materials not arrive and having things, having obstacles with the, the works of the renovations. You just have to think okay what can I do today? Maybe uh, things don't go as I planned, but what can I do? I, we are not on track with the pool, but maybe I can go and wax the terracotta floors. And saying with the baby, okay, maybe I can't sleep for another, I don't know, for the rest of the year. But uh, what I can do is hold this healthy baby who is very happy and giggling all through the day, which is such a blessing. And then I watch uh, things on the news about Ukrainian women who are giving birth prematurely because of the stress of being in a war and and just think gosh I'm so lucky to have a safe warm bed and food to nourish myself and milk to nourish my baby <laughs> We had my friend come and stay, Tanya from London, and she was there. Actually, she did a lovely dive into the pool that you'll see maybe if I show it, um, and uh, to christen the pool. And she was just sitting there with Guido drinking some rose, and we were looking at the, the water, and I was holding Gianfranco. And, and she said, You know, these houses that you see, these homes that are so full of warmth and character and soul and good taste they are not the homes that are built in three months and just slapped up together like you see on these reality tv programs where they just do a makeover in in a week uh it's 
the, these homes where you, you feel that character and that soul are ones where the owners have invariably chosen each piece slowly, gently, consciously, thoughtfully uh, over years and maybe there have been there's been like five years where they can't afford a certain piece for a space but then then one day they can or one day for a big birthday they, they, they make that investment and and it, and it all comes together gently and slowly and and then if you are choosing to, to have a family there it's it's a lovely evolution and something that even one day your children can continue working on and maybe it's never finished and uh, and that is something that I really like I really love that idea of, of, of the evolution of, of a home uh, that is put together thoughtfully The, the water filled up and I thought oh, I can't believe we've made it to this point and even the same thing with the breastfeeding I can't believe I've made it over six months now of doing this every night sometimes every hour of, of, of the night and, uh, and and you know it hasn't gotten easier but I've become more accepting of 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 this is my life now and this is something that I've wanted to be a mother for so long and I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't give it up for anything so that's just the state of mind I'm in certainly helps having this beautiful glorious warm weather it uh, I open the shutters in the morning and I'm holding Gianfranco and he's all seems so smiley and happy in the morning and, uh, and I look out and I see that shimmering sparkling water through the olive trees and I just oh I just love it I, I go down uh, barefoot and I walk and, and my bare feet on the warm stone and you can hear birdsong and you can see all the wildflowers and it's just you can even now the jasmine is coming into bloom and there's the fragrance of jasmine and it feels honestly like a film I mean I know a lot of you say oh it's so cinematic but it really does and and of course there are also times where you know Guido and I will be fighting or I will just feel like a zombie or for example this piece now that I'm doing to you I have filmed four times because there's a problem with my microphones and then there was a problem with the light the the clouds behind when I filmed this yesterday actually the lighting was terrible so uh, yeah there's also those realities but but ultimately uh, these these moments that you the I'm capturing on film they, they really do feel that beautiful in real life and in real life it's almost it's almost better because you have all the your full senses you have the full sensory experience so now uh, we are going to uh, think about the outdoor furniture and to make the place feel a bit more cozy at the moment we just put out some uh, just a temporary solution just some little beds and with mattresses on just so that we could lie there and have Gianfranco doing his little rolls on the on the mattress but uh, what we would ideally like to do is make a whole long couch along that wall to the left of the blue door so that we can have like an aperitivo there or you can go and lie down and take a siesta after lunch or you can just watch children in the pool and lie down and, uh, and then we would like some sun lounges uh, uh, that could be on the pavement or under the olive trees and uh, I have been researching all week the different options for sunbeds uh, the ideal would be wrought iron but it is just so expensive I mean it would be so lovely and traditional and ornate with the curling wrought iron you know and they're, and they're obviously super weatherproof so you don't have to rush and bring them in out of the rain or the wind but they're so expensive so we kind of jettisoned that idea uh, the other option is timber I feeling like because um, I saw my father always use teak on boats on the deck of boats and that seems to be uh, a timber that, that wears the weather well uh, so uh, I'm considering teak I don't know if any of you have experience with teak outdoor furniture there is also rattan uh, I don't know it, it says that it's outdoor furniture but I notice in the fine print it says oh only light rain so I don't know whether that's really a good option there is that option that a lot of uh, that's very reasonably priced but it's more of a synthetic material it's like a fake return and it's sort of plasticky and both Guido and I think that it looks a little bit cheap and modern uh, we sort of want something that looks a bit more traditional to, to harmonize in with the rest of the 
the space and the stones and all the, the sort of antique uh, materials. Uh, it would be very convenient though because obviously it, 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 it uh, is very durable. However, uh, in a lot of the a lot of pools that I've seen in Italy, where they have that out that plasticky kind of synthetic material, it looks very modern and just sort of detracts. I think the other option we thought about is making our own sofa, like with the the bricks, the same bricks that we used for the pavement around the pool, or the rectangular ones, and then maybe we could somehow have it uh, lift up the base underneath the cushions, so we could put the cushions in there where if it rains. Um, it doesn't really rain that much in, in summer, so we're talking about maybe one or two nights of the season. Have you seen the cafe? Have you seen our new lettini? Yeah, 100%. Comodissimi. Lettini sono letti. So, your, your preference is that we find a... Um... Something that we can leave outside. Yeah, so the option... Possibly also with cushions that stay outside. During the night, so they don't get the moist and wet. yeah, yeah, like a yeah waterproof sort, sort of, of canvas, boat, yeah, boat yeah, stuff. yes, yeah. yes. But um, the idea is to do a long, maybe four meter sofa couch on against the wall that for for like yeah. aperitivo and and or just someone having an after lunch yeah, nap. That, that could be an idea. Uh, we have to understand if it's too invasive as a, as a structure or if it's better to have just lettini or both this is well, our... i was thinking if we had just two lettini or two two sun lounges let's say if we do a couch it's sort of the dimension is that one yeah exactly of so, the so of not the... too high yeah i would go a little bit higher yeah obviously those are just very low but slightly higher so you don't see them much and that big sort of yeah and ideally with a nice wide armrest so that you can put wine glasses and little snacks yeah, no, then we will have nice coffee tables in front see it see yeah. but um but the 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 options for the the lettini the the sun lounges are um they've got this sort of rattan that's made of plastic sort of thing yeah it's ugly yeah, yeah. and uh or in teak uh very expensive it's not that expensive, actually. No. no, no. It's real teak or it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, real teak. Okay. But it's not as expensive as... The most expensive is the raw tan ones, which we both okay, love teak is fine. the most. Teak is, is lovely. I mean, I think it looks very old-fashioned and it's like, you know, what the ones uh, with the armrests that would and... That fine, but I have... I mean, like, if you get normal wood like acacia, bete, pine, or stuff like that, also if it's very well treated, after two years, they will get ruined. Have the, 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 See? built-in couch yeah and the latini or at least two nice arms yeah i think i think we need only maximum two because just to go in that corner over there no I or on the or on the lawn under the law, under the trees the yeah tree. but only two i mean we're not running a hotel here no i think i think the fact is if it's two i will never sit on them if there's more than two people that's because obviously one is polite and makes the other one certo but if there are people there then maybe you'll be sitting on the couch or with in these no, chairs by people i mean your parents so see but my parents don't sunbake they they swim or they have like you know they'll yeah, be sitting there for coffee thing here reading a book in the shade yeah that does sound like lovely just be on a nice latino that you can shift around certo but at that oh, point yeah, you'll be having a na you'll be having a nap on the on the oh really for it's just there's a lot of furniture then isn't it no too much two there and, and two on the on the como se dice sul pavement mm. ah! i guess it depends how much they cost obviously <laughs> none yeah yeah we get one <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah exactly the book the latino yeah yeah and then, obviously, with children, we're also talking about the fence. I was thinking we should we should talk to the iron monger. Maybe we should just get some welding stuff for my father, and he could he could weld a okay, a, a beautiful a temporary thing, and in two years we take it away. Well, in two years, but I'm worried when when Gianfranco can run, it's still going to be, be able a... to swim. <laughs> and our friends' kids? It's their responsibility to look after them. <laughs> they're, all, they're all much older, so. They're all capable to swim. You think? Yeah. I mm. think we just need to put something temporary. Really? See. Si. Well, I was thinking we could get, uh, have like a... fatto di muro di coso, sta 5.000 euro. Si, lo so, lo so. I know, it's so expensive. 
ci si mette oppure ci si mette nulla e uno lo vada eh. se no uno pianta dei paletti qui metti la rete giro giro che va lungo la fossetta dell'acqua ma... e giro giro e alta così finché lui può per quest'estate l'anno prossimo bisogna lunosi paletti fatti di, di legno? Sì, metti una rete e basta quella la ha ah, una rete that's so ugly though, no? anche di corda come quelle che ci sono in barca ah sì, that's a, that's a good idea come quelle in barca yeah, yeah, yeah and then the question is what color of the cushions I love creams obviously I love light colors I think they look lovely against the stone uh, obviously having them be a weather, waterproof material and, and something that can be washed Uh, or do we go for a navy blue, that's always classic, or something like a, a very vintage retro stripe, like a yellow and white stripe or a blue and white stripe, uh, that's another option as well. Uh, let me know in the comments, I know a lot of you have pools or perhaps you've seen some interesting colour combinations or, or outdoor furniture in your travels in, in, uh, in, in Italy. Uh, and. Uh, Do know that I read all of your comments. I try to like them so you know I've read them. Be aware there are so many clones, Kylie Flavel clones, and they come up, these trolls, these scammers, every single week. I'm just one person and they are many, so I can only do so much, but I try to block them and remove them and put remove the block the keywords that they use often. Uh, but it's hard because they ask you to chat in private. I will never ask you to chat in private. I always comment publicly so you can see it. So don't, if they're trying to sort of ask for your phone number or your credit card details or anything, to chat on Telegram or WhatsApp. That's not me. And thank you. I love that we have such a kind community here and so many of you are looking out for other people who might look like they're about to be scammed by a fake Kylie Flavel and I see you sort of warning other people and I, and I love that. I, I so appreciate uh, how, how supportive you are, not just of me, but of each other as well. It's uh, really, really lovely. Thank you very much to my patrons. Thank you if you've subscribed to this channel. Do think about giving this video a like if you've got to this point and you liked it <laughs> and I will see you next episode next weekend. Alla prossima!